uh, welcome you all to this tenth session uh, of this course. And uh, uh, in total, there will be eleven sessions. So today is the second last session. We'll have one more session uh, over the next weekend. And uh, there might be a tutorial session on 17th as well. Not very really sure as of now, but I will make the announcement. Now, regarding uh, um, announcements that I've already made on the portal, your quiz 2 has been uploaded. And it will be OPUM 5th, no, that tomorrow, 20th November long duration of 15 days for which the quiz is open. Quiz 2, it's of 2 marks. It will be open from 5th November till 20th November. Second announcement is uh, regarding assignment. Uh, two of the assignment. So phase 2 of the assignment is also uploaded. It's not as rigorous as the phase one, so it's a small portion which only covers design patterns. You need to identify two gap for design patterns and two grasp design patterns and show how these patterns are applicable in the case study that you had chosen earlier in one. One thing important that you have to keep in mind is that you have to stick to the same groups as were there in the phase one. Please do not change the groups. For details regarding what has to be done, the phase two assignment is given in the document and the last date of submission of the phase two assignment is 20th November. Will be no extension for submission of phase two because we already have exams starting from 24th November. The 24th and 25th are the exams and then one week break is there and then we have the makeup exams, right? So immediately once the phase two submission is over after 20th, we would start with the Vivar and request you not to put in request to reschedule the vivas because it's only a duration of 15 days in which we would, we would have to conduct all the vivas so that by the time the makeup answer sheets are evaluated the assignment evaluation is also completed Right. So it's going to be a tight schedule for you as well and for the uh, persons evaluating the assignment as well. So please try not to request for rescheduling of vivas, etc. A uh, few questions that I take up. Exams are two weeks after the regular exam. No, I think it's after one week. So there's one weekend gap and then the makeup exams are there. have a viva for the assignment will be a combined viva for phase one as well as phase two uh, the question is when would we make up result for the mid semester exam be out uh, November was the last date for uh, evaluation of the makeup answer sheets whatever uh, can be there would definitely be covered by Monday, I assume, and then Tuesday uh, or Wednesday you would have the result of the makeup examination as well. Also, please be on lookout for recheck. So once you have gone through your answer sheets, in case you have a recheck request, you need to apply it through the same portal from which you are able to view the evaluated answer sheets. Recheck is open, so you can apply if you want to do the same. So question about Viva, so let me just take that up. So group Viva and individual Viva. So it will be a group Viva. One group 
would be given a slot of say 15 to 20 minutes and all would be requested to log in at the same time and then the viva would be conducted any postpone of examination dates no postponement of the examination dates examination dates are fixed and it because it happens at a very large scale so there is no postponement of the examination scale uh, dates the venues are fixed the venues have been booked for the exam so there will be no change that's it for today uh, no more questions i see you have certain queries other than this you can write a mail to me and i would try and reply to them in case you are traveling please uh, you'll have to manage it at your own level you be online for the viva that can be done but for the written examination you have to uh, come and uh, give the examination in person why is online so you can even if you are outside right okay let us start today so today we are going to start with the gasp patterns we did the gang of four design patterns uh, in the last two sessions and we saw a lot of uh, implementation along with those patterns how to implement those patterns uh, we will see the grass patterns uh, grass stands for general responsibility assignment software patterns right so it's it's an acronym Grass an acronym which stands for general responsibility assignment, right? The key word to pick up from this acronym is responsibility assignment. So these software patterns are based on the concept of assignment of responsibility, right? So they are based or they are driven on responsibility. So they for a approach which is called responsibility driven approach or rdt so let's try and understand what we actually mean by responsibility and what is responsibility driven approach right software objects have a responsibility with an abstraction of what they do Every software object, every software class is responsible for doing certain tasks, right? And that is at an abstract level, if you talk about it, it is uh, the responsibility of the class. Responsibility is essentially of two types. Do responsibility and knowing responsibility. Right. Then what do we mean by doing responsibility and no responsibility? Doing responsibility of object includes doing something itself. Right? Just for example, creating an object or doing some calculation. It might be initiating action in other objects. Example: Controlling and coordinating activities in other objects. Right. So, doing responsibility of an object is something that it does. It does a calculation, an initiation action, a creation action. Right. The question comes: Is that does the methods of the action let us know? Uh, methods of the task let us know what are the doing responsibility of the object. We would say yes, they do help, but in the abstraction level, at the abstract level, we cannot say that methods are the responsibilities of the object. But methods are something that helps the object to complete its responsibilities. 
right merits are are in a realization of those responsibilities that an object has right directly we cannot say that the methods are the responsibilities of the object because responsibilities are at an abstract level it is the method that facilitate in doing the responsibilities but themselves cannot be defined as the responsibilities right so doing responsibility of an object is something that the object does what is the knowing responsibility responsibility of an object is the knowledge that the object stores within itself right so that knowledge can be written in the form of encapsulated data that it has about related objects that it has right and know about things it can do right responsibility is about the niche that the object has with it it capabilities information that the object stores within it doing and knowing responsibility is what helps us to decide which object should do what graph patterns are based on this responsibility approach the graph patterns help us tell us that this particular object needs to do this it should have this responsibility or in other words an object having this responsibility will be responsible for doing this particular task right just to remind a responsibility is not the same thing as method it's an abstraction but methods help objects to fulfill its responsibilities here list of the nine graph patterns that we are going to take a look at today and these are the nine graph patterns that are there in your course right so there is crater low plane cohesion fabrication variations action expert controller polymorphism and indirect these nine graph patterns and in total actually there are nine graph patterns in totals and all the nine are there in your course and we're going to have a look at these patterns in today's lecture let's move ahead uh, there are questions coming up i'll take up uh, see What is the meaning of knowing about related objects? Right. So knowing means uh, the information that it stores a particular object stores about the other object. Right. What all information about the other object is stored within this particular object? Right? This is the knowing responsibility of the object. As we move ahead. with the examples you will be able to understand these responsibility concepts in a more detail uh, let me take up first pattern and then we'll see uh, we are go about it the first pattern the first graph pattern that we take up is the crater pattern right the problem that this crater pattern aims to address is that who should be responsible for creating a new ins of some class right so given a case study right now one say for example you are through with the design model you need to decide that this this particular design class who should be responsible which particular class should be responsible for creating instances of class x dilution that is provided by the creator part and the solution class b responsibility to create an instance of class a 
of these is true. The better. So in order to uh, assign class B the responsibility to create instances of A, we look for these four options, right? And the more the numbers are true, we are in favor of class B, that class B should be responsible for creating instances of class A. This option is maintains or compositely aggregate A. Right? Remember, we did an aggregation and a composition uh, kind of relationship that exists between classes or objects. If B contains or aggregates A, B is something that should be responsible for instantiating objects of A, right? If B records A, B is responsible for uh, recording A. Right? By recording A, we mean that if B is responsible for updating information in A, then again B should be responsible for instantiating objects of A. Option might be B uses A. Is uh, has a coupling with A, right? It clearly uses A invokes methods of A very frequently, then we say B closely uses A, so then in that case, B should be responsible for instantiating objects of A. Before option is, B has the initializing data for A that B pass to A when it is created. Thus, B is also an expert in creating A. Since B has the data which is required to create A, it becomes obvious that B should be responsible for creating A rather than B passing that initialization data to C and then asking C to instantiate objects of A. Right? However, if more than one option applies and there is a type, in case you find that there is a type, so suppose B Compositely aggregates A, but it is C which has the initialization, initializing data for A. Then the, uh, you go in favor of the class which aggregates or co which completely aggregates or contains class A. So if B compositely aggregates objects of A and C has the initializing data for Initializing A, then your vote would be in favor of B because it compositely aggregates A, right? Uh, the main reason if you try and understand B because, uh, like example, we studied aggregation. So, for example, hand is an aggregation of fingers, right? So, it hand which should be re responsible for creating objects of fingers because as soon as the object of hand is destroyed, the objects of fingers also have to be destroyed, right? It should not be that the object of hand is destroyed and then a message is sent to another class to destroy objects of finger. Right. So, the highest preference is given to a class which compositely aggregates the other class to instantiate objects of that particular class. Right. This has the highest advantage. So if this, there is tie at the other, in other cases, suppose there is the condition 1 doesn't hold at all and uh, B records A and then you might find that C Closely uses A and D has the initializing data, right? Then our design patterns would help you to solve the problem. Then in that case, you will take right? because your creator pattern doesn't help you to provide enough information. You make use of the other patterns to solve the issues, right? So that 
your cooling of the crust remains high and cupping is low in this particular instance itself you can see that uh, the fourth option says that if b has the initializing data for a that will pass to a when it is created then b will be responsible for creating a because b is an expert right so in this case this is an information expert in creating a right? so information expert is the next pattern that we go to see right so the patterns they are designed in such a way that they would help you uh, easily in uh, think between alternatives as to if this is not true which should be the one that is true right i will take a few examples now from the snakes and ladders case study right so just to quickly remind you of what the snakes and ladders case study was uh, this was a customized game of snakes and ladders uh, one of the main a uh, concept was that the game owner had the right to configure the boat and its stakes and ladders at different positions right so he can even choose the number of stakes and ladders that to be placed along with the position then if you remember the game owner was responsible for inviting the players to join the games uh, join the game and, uh, Uh, issues with the way in the mode in which the game has to be played right so the game could be played in multiple modes something that was there the game could be played either in even or odd mode right so if it is in even mode all the players um okay if it's in e if a particular player is in even mode then if he gets a even number on his dice that particular Uh, moves right moves his coin and if a player is in odd mode then when it's a odd number on his dice then only he would move the coin right then there was a multiple coins mode is uh, in ladders there is a multiple coin mode so a player can choose to play with multiple coins either two to four coins but at the same time all the players should have the same number of coins and there was a hybrid mode right? so continuing with this particular example the particular case study let's try and ask a few questions uh, related to the creator pattern a main model here so we we'll just move ahead okay so this is one question that we can ask ourselves in snakes and ladders example who should be responsible for creating the objects of snake crystals using the creator pattern can you tell who should be responsible for creating the objects of the snake crystals one answer is the board should be responsible so if you i would just go back to our model that we had so this was the model that we had drawn initially so we had a game owner who was responsible for configuring the board and uh, the snakes and ladders were placed on the board look at this model looking at this diagram now using the creator pattern the question is who should be responsible for creating the objects of the gay of the snake class this the class should be responsible for creating the objects of the snake class let me and understand this why okay is in being is that 
this and ladder objects are up of the boat right is the boat that aggregates the seven years right there is a request to go back to the diagram i'll go back to the diagram right to the diagram we had drawn right and you see very rightly the game owner has the data or rights to configure the boat right so in a way we can say based on the creator pattern it is the animation expert is the game owner so game owner might be the one who is responsible for configuring the board and might have the initial data for initializing uh, the board and in turn the snakes and the ladder right but because the board class aggregates snakes and ladders objects the board class would be responsible for creating the objects of snakes and ladders will not be the game owner or the game controller right? here the game that you see this is actually the game controller so your game controller or the game owner in this case would not be responsible for creating objects of the snake that is it would be the boat because the boat, the boat is destroyed six and ladders objects have to be destroyed right and it is the board which comprises of the snakes and ladders and that is what the creator pattern says that the pattern which says that if a b contains or compositely aggregates a then that then that class is the one that is the first responsibility of in initializing instances of class a right so in this case is the book class will be responsible for initializing objects of takes as well as letters right the other question okay the next question is who should be responsible for creating the object of the this class and uh, questions go diagram okay i'll just go wait go to the diagram who should be responsible for creating the objects of the discus okay slowly slowly are coming close to it so it will be the game controller who be responsible for creating the instances of the this class that will not give play class the responsibility to create instances of this class it will game controller that is in the game owner see even if you don't go according to the pattern still logically you can make out the game owner and the player are entities which are supposed to do a particular task right so in order to uh, increase the cohesion of these particular classes so that uh, based on their name itself they are able to chain their responsibility and ever they are just desire to do play class will not be responsible for creating 
instances of the dice class right you while creating while designing the object you must keep in mind that the of the class should be high class is not doing any unrelated task right? and that is the reason auto player this dice player will not share the object of the dice because the dice is also a part of the game the only the game exists when only the dice exist the game controller which instantiates the dice as soon as the game down or the game instances of game control are gone deleted the instances of dice also have to be deleted the right? game controller is responsible for creating instances of the dice class let's take up a few questions uh, what is the difference between the game owner and the controller so there's a uh, there was a domain concept which was there given in the case study that there is a game owner who is also a player right but he has an additional task of configuring the board the game board so once the game owner configures the game board then he invites other players to come and play the game however the game controller was the main controller class the system controller class which was responsible for getting controlling the entire Uh, game system. Right, so was our game controller. So it's between the game owner and the game controller. Explained why the player will not be responsible for uh, creating the instances of the dice class. Right. Uh, another important thing that I would like to add here is that each of these patterns they are related to each other. Right. you might feel that this particular aspect uh, holds true because you are applying the creator pattern but you might find that at the same time you are also applying the cohesion pattern as well as the low coupling pattern right so all these patterns go hand in hand right and if there is a question now this is important thing to understand if there is a question and uh, the answer is based on bundle patterns right so suppose you uh, say that this particular class will be created by this particular class and the answer is this pattern and there are multiple true answers you would definitely get marks for all the correct answers that so it is not one pattern that might be in Uh, play at a particular time in order to decide which particular class uh, will do that particular task, right? But of course, uh, one has more role to play. In that case, if one pattern has a more role to play in order to decide which particular class will carry out that particular responsibility, then of course that particular answer will have. the marks right but there would still be partial marking then uh, in case there are patterns which you identify which also lead to the same solution right but the idea is you are able to explain how that particular pattern applies to that particular case in this you are able to explain correctly you would definitely get more than partial marks one question in this particular case 
can count any gang of four pattern can be applied here you can apply the singleton pattern here right so most of the time we see that controllers are always singleton right? in this particular case the game or the game controller would be a singleton tango four pattern is what that can be applied in this particular case right okay other option that is is that board is also singleton um can we go for board as being a singleton yes of course we can have board as a singleton yeah in a particular game there has to be only a single board right so board would so be a singleton in this case and if more pattern i mean to say if there are more patterns that can be applied we have to mention all of them otherwise partial marks will be given it's way around that i am trying to say i am trying to say if a uh, given a case there would be one pattern that would be the best fit so that is the one that is best determining or uh, best answer for that particular case that in case you have written that particular answer you get full marks But if you have not written the best answer right but there are you've mentioned about some other pattern which also might play a good role and result in the same answer then you might get partial marks right so it would not be a flat zero right so there are more than one patterns which are acting and leading to the same answer and if you have not got best pattern as the answer you've got the second best pattern as the answer and if you are able to explain that correctly then you would get partial marks few more questions question can we use factory to create multiple instances of snakes and ladders that right. um the factory pattern is used in the case when the uh, objects are of different types so for example in our cake factory that we studied the different kind of cakes that have to be created right whereas in this case the six snakes are of type snake itself it is only the starting point and the ending point that is changing right so factory pattern doesn't hold good here there in fact no need of creating a factory pattern you would just create an array of objects of snakes and an array of objects of ladders would have would it have been that there are 10 kinds of ladders that can be created and there are 10 kinds of snakes that can be created then that case we would make a factory here and then get Uh, uh, objects of those different kinds from the snake factory or lab factory
Okay. Use a factory pattern for the board. I, your need a factory pattern for the board. So your factory pattern is only when you have a variety of objects to be created, each of which has the same behavior, and you get to know only at the runtime which particular type is required. Right? The board is a does have a variety, and in this case, the board will be a single turn. Right? So you will not need a factory here. Right? Factories are implemented as single turn, but it's the other way round is not also whatever is a singleton may not be a factory we need it to be a singleton because only one instance of that class is required in the particular system case what is the best fit case grasp creator or singleton so that depends on the question Okay, if the question is who would be responsible for creating the objects of the snake class, and the answer is both, definitely it is the grasp creator pattern which plays the role here. Right? If my question would have been uh, uh, many instances of game controller would be there in this particular case. How do you decide that, or which design pattern would you use to decide that? Then, that case, your answer would be that this would be implemented as a single pattern. Right? So you have to be very careful about uh, when you read the question and try to find out actually what is the uh, which particular degree of which particular pattern is the one the question is. Indicating towards. Okay, so the moment I say create objects, it's it, it at the point starts pointing towards the creator pattern. Two questions. I am not very comfortable with this question. Six and ladders can use iterator pattern. Um, want to iterate through the various snakes and ladders. Uh, you want to use an iterator pattern in this case, but uh, see, iterator pattern is like you want to iterate through the same. Um, different kind of iterations that might be done through the snakes array or the ladders array. Right? So it would be a single linear iteration that would be done through the snakes array or the ladders array that was would there. But in case you think, please justify if you think that different kind of iterators would be required to iterate through the snakes array and the ladders array, right? So for the snakes array that might be created and the ladder array that might be created, you might want to uh, implement an iterator. You'll have to be, uh, you explain why you think that is, right? But for the snake class, it it is not an, it's not a aggregation of uh, objects. It's, it's a standalone class, right? The snake, snake class only has two attributes, the start point of the snake and the end point of the snake. This one snake object will represent a particular single snake on the board. It's an array. The creation is created within the board class, but if you want to convert it into an iterator and then have an iterator pattern applied on it, the field that is required, then you should back up with the um, solution, possible reasons why you think it is correct. Okay, uh, let us move ahead.
Okay, yes, I I have one more question for the same question. Uh, who is responsible for creating the objects of the snake class? And the question is, why is not the factory pattern the best fit here? Right? The factory pattern is not the best fit here because snake doesn't have different types of snakes that are existing in this system. It, it is a particular kind of snake that we have existing in the system. It is not C snake, P snake, Y snake, X snake. Right? It's a single kind of snake. If the case study would have been complicated by saying that the look and feel of the snakes are also different, right? And they are drawn in a different manner. One is a water snake, one is a viper. And then that way, they have gone for a factory to give you a viper and give you a cobra and things like that. Right? In this case, all the four snakes, all the ten snakes, whatever the number of snakes might be, they are all instances of the same snake class. So factory pattern does not hold here. Right? In, in this particular case, the factory pattern is incorrect. Fact pattern applies when you have types of eggs that can be created. All of them have the same behavior, but their individual types are different. Right. You had pineapple cake, you had vanilla cake, you had butterscotch cake, etc. That is not the case here. Objects. Object. Let us move ahead and uh, otherwise we'll get stuck on the board class and the snakes itself. Uh, we saw also who should be responsible for creating the objects of the dice class. So this question also we discussed that it is the control for uh, creating the objects of the dice class. So this was creator pattern. Uh, let's move ahead and take up the next pattern. Mission expert. So the problem this particular pattern tries to address is that what is the general principle of assigning responsibility to the object? Right. Based on what principle do we decide or should we decide that this particular object should be responsible for doing this particular task? And the information expert pattern helps us solve this problem. It says assign responsibility to the information expert. That means assign responsibility to the class that has the information necessary to fulfill the responsibility. So if there is a class which has the information which is required to fulfill that particular task, make that particular class do that particular task. Let's try and understand this again with questions. So the questions, let's see the first one. In the snakes and ladders example, who should be responsible finding whether the tail of mouth of a snake has been reached after a move? Right. So once a coin has been moved on the boat, and say if you have landed on 53, who should be responsible to find whether to stay here or you have to move from 53? Right. So if you have landed on the mouth of a snake, you have to move. If you have landed on the tail of a ladder, you have to move. Right. So who should be responsible for deciding whether the tail or mouth of a snake or a ladder has been reached after a move. Most of you 
very close to it okay so majority is there it is the both class will be responsible for finding whether the teeth or the mouth of a snake has been reached why because the both class has the information of all the snakes right it is the board class which is the information expert in this particular case the board class would quickly query the snake object and find out where it is the uh, mouth of a snake has been reached or not and also it will query all the larger objects to out whether all the end of a, a starting point of the ladder has been reached right so if the starting point of the ladder has been reached then the player has to climb up and if the mouth of the snake has been reached then the player has to climb has to fall down right so since is the boat class which has um asian which uh, the board class which has the information about all the snakes and the ladders it the information expert in this case and has to be responsible for finding the tail or mouth of a snake has been reached or, or not right and this is the kind of explanation is expected to write in examination so apart from mentioning the kind of pattern the reason why that pattern is applicable here and the reason why that one is the best suited for a particular case right so if you say board class then it has to be backed up by the pattern and why this is the best answer that this is what you must explain right. come to the next question <clears throat> who should be responsible for knowing whether a player operates in even mode or off mode question is who should be responsible for knowing whether a player operates in in mode or off mode okay quest to go back to the game uh the main model to check the slide that it is on so i can actually go easily it's on eight here it is the domain model you need to find out who should be responsible for knowing whether a player operates in even mode or the odd mode so i go back to the light seems to be a tie <laughs> most of you are uh, some of you say it should be the game owner almost 50 50 and the others say it should be the game or what you call as the game controller so either game owner or the game controller is the one who should be responsible for knowing whether a player operates in even or odd mode right if you see here the game owner himself is also a player and if i make game owner store information out the modes who will store the information about the mode in which 
the game owner is playing. So the game controller who is actually the information expert in terms of storing the information about modes of each player have to be stored at a central location where the information about every player's mode is stored. Game owner is also a player. Game owner also operates in a particular mode. So it should be the game controller who should actually store information or is responsible for knowing what is the mode for each player as well as what is the mode for the game owner. And these design patterns help you to go ahead and implement your given design. Right? So it's it's like once you decide responsibilities at the abstract level, then at the implementation level, you know that this particular responsibilities of this particular class and hence this particular class should have a method to implement that particular responsibility, right? And then, hence you know, you know, what are the methods that this particular class should implement? Right? Controller, which, of, which source or which is the information expert in storing the modes of all the players, including the game owner. Okay, the question, game controller is the superset for holding all information, is it or not? Yes, of course, the game controller is one who is responsible for holding all the information. Right? But the game controller cannot do all the tasks on its, right? It has to delegate tasks depending upon the situation. up the question who is responsible for knowing when a coin has crossed the hundredth square or not. Responsible for knowing whether a coin has crossed the hundredth square or not, right? So if a coin crosses the hundredth square, then the player no, uh, no longer need to move. The coin no longer needs to move. And if there is a single coin for that player, then of course the player would win. But who should be responsible for knowing whether a coin has crossed the hundredth square or not? So, uh, there are maybe three options, three answers that I am getting. Put the controller and the player. Right. So I'll see whether the player should be the one who should be responsible for knowing whether a coin has crossed the hundredth square or not. So if the player stores the information where a coin is at present. Player, the information expert does not know the location of a coin. So it is either it is 
the game controller who would be knowing the end position of a coin. Who would be responsible for finding out whether a coin has crossed the hundred square or not? Where it is the boat or controller? Right. If you see, they in this particular case, the question falls back to the question. Actually, the answer falls back to the other. Another question is: the question is is possible instances of Option. So one question somebody had asked in chat, and I did not take it up that time at the time of the creator pattern, but to be answered now. So who is or who should be responsible for creating instances of coin objects? Right. The answer could be it would be the board class. Coin objects are placed on board. Right? In a way, you could think that board consists or comprises of coin objects, which, in a way, might not be true as well. Right? And it could be a possible solution that the game controller is responsible for creating instances of coin objects. Right? So there are coins which are to be created by the game controller, right? This is one question which is pretty tricky to answer. You can continue to think about it. Uh, there's no answer for this question. There is no right answer for this question, right? But eventually, you would actually find out the best answer for this question if somebody would actually go and try and implement this, right? But nevertheless, Whatever the try, the I uh, may be okay. If the board is responsible for creating the instances of the coin object, then board should be responsible for knowing whether a coin has crossed the hundred square or not. Alternatively, if the game controller is responsible for creating the instances of the coin object, then the game controller should be responsible for knowing whether a coin has crossed the hundred square or not. So we do see that there is a tie here and let's keep this question in mind and we try and see that if there is some other pattern that helps us to get answer to this particular question as to who should be responsible for creating instances of the coin objects. Uh, there's a request for a break. Uh, even I need a break, so let me just stop the recording and we'll go for a five minutes break here.